Hi, I'm Laren. This is Knife Steel Nerds. I've been seeing comments all across the internet saying that I have said that lower hardness magna cut has better corrosion resistance than high hardness magna cut. And so therefore they use magna cut at a lower hardness for corrosion resistance. So I have never said that before. It is true that there are different levels of hardness for different applications, but hardness does not dictate corrosion resistance. So it's not one of the parameters that you would use to decide on your hardness target. I have a video where I've talked about the pros and cons of higher and lower hardness with magna cut. So how you heat treat a given steel can affect its corrosion resistance, but a whole range of hardness values can be achieved with both good or bad heat treatments. So I will give several examples for this. A separate but related topic is about how hard different steels can be heat treated to when related to their corrosion resistance. For example, the very corrosion resistant Vanex and LC200N top out around 59 to 61 Rockwell. So I will also explain why they don't get any harder and why this is partially due to those steels having very high corrosion resistance. When iron or carbon steel is in a corrosive en environment, it forms rust, which is an iron oxide. If you add chromium to iron, the corrosion resistance is increased the more chromium you add. The chromium forms with oxygen at the surface to make a passive film, which prevents rust from forming. Oh, this chart shows an old classic study of corrosion rate of steel in high humidity environments. You can see that the corrosion rate went down with increasing chromium until about 12%. Sometimes the cutoff for a steel being stainless is given as 10.5, 11, or 12% chromium, but there isn't any real agreement as far as I can tell. But corrosion resistance will increase beyond even 12% chromium. The more you add, the better the corrosion resistance will be. It isn't an on-off thing. When a knife maker or manufacturer receives steel, it is in the annealed condition, so it is easy to drill, grind, and machine. In the annealed state, stainless steel is not yet stainless. Most of the chromium at that point is in the form of carbides in the steel. When the chromium is tied up with carbon as a carbide, it cannot form the chromium oxide layer with oxygen at the surface. There are three major steps to heat treating, austenitizing, quenching, and tempering. During austenitizing, the steel is heated up to a high temperature and then held, allowing the chromium carbides to be dissolved, or at least partially dissolved, to put more chromium in solution so that the chromium oxide passive layer can be formed. So I have a chart showing the increase in chromium versus austenitizing temperature for LMAX and Vanex. This is a calculated chromium in solution. So one of the key variables for corrosion resistance is the austenitizing temperature, because heating it hotter means more chromium in solution. However, the amount of chromium in solution is also controlled in part by the composition. So the chromium in solution for LMAX at a very high temperature of 2200 degrees Fahrenheit is still below Vanex when it is austenitized at 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. Though austenitizing at a higher temperature also leads to increased hardness, so in that way higher hardness can sometimes mean improved corrosion resistance. During quenching, the steel is rapidly cooled to form the hard phase of steel martensite. Martensite formation is controlled by temperature rather than time. There is a martensite start temperature and a martensite finish temperature. In some cases, martensite finish can be below room temperature, and in that case, the steel does not fully transform, meaning some austenite remains in the steel. This is called retained austenite. If there is too much retained austenite, the hardness is reduced in the steel, and also the edge performance is bad, and the knife would be very difficult to sharpen. One of the major factors for martensite start and martensite finish temperature is the carbon content, as shown in the chart. With higher austenitizing temperatures and more carbide being dissolved, this does not only put more chromium in solution, but also more carbon. So with Vanex, I included both carbon and nitrogen in this chart, since nitrogen also contributes to hardness. But you can see that Vanex has more carbon and nitrogen in solution for a given temperature than LMAX. So all of that happens as long as the quench is sufficiently fast to avoid other competing transformations during slow cooling. So carbides can precipitate again, they can come out again if you slow cool rather than quenching rapidly. And this can happen with the relatively common gas quenches that are used in large vacuum furnaces used by many knife manufacturers and some knife makers. Oh, I covered that in an earlier video about custom versus production heat treating. So sometimes the furnaces with the relatively slow quenches that they use lead to reduced corrosion resistance. Okay, you'll notice that the Vanex hardness dropped off 
at 2025 degrees, while the LMAX hardness increased all the way up to 2150, which is the highest temperature that I tried. Those heat treatments included a cryo step in liquid nitrogen after the quench. If cryo had not been used, the Vanex would have seen a drop in hardness lower than 2025 degrees, and the maximum hardness would not have been as high. The LMAX likely also would have seen a hardness drop within that range, somewhere under 2150. As an example, here is a chart showing AEBL steel when quenched to room temperature versus when it's placed in a freezer after quenching versus liquid nitrogen. So the AEBL achieved its peak hardness around 1975 to 2000 degrees, just like the Vanex, and then it dropped in hardness with further increases in austenitizing temperature. It reached a max hardness of around 64 Rockwell, though when no cold treatment was used, it maxed out around 62 Rockwell. The reason for the drop in hardness above a certain temperature is because of retained austenite. In other words, the martensite finish temperature was below room temperature. Using liquid nitrogen after the quench means cooling the steel to a lower temperature, which gets you closer to martensite finish. However, some retained austenite will stabilize and not be transformed even with the very low temperatures of liquid nitrogen, which is why the hardness still drops with an austenitizing temperature that is too high. So the use of cryo can allow both higher hardness and higher corrosion resistance if the austenitizing temperature is increased. For a fixed austenitizing temperature, typically there is a 1 to 2 Rockwell C increase, but the corrosion resistance would not be affected. After quenching, steel is tempered to improve its toughness. The trade-off is that hardness is also reduced through tempering. So I have a chart showing tempering for MagnaCut with different austenitizing temperatures. So different austenitizing and tempering temperature combinations can be used to achieve the same level of hardness. For example, to achieve around 60 Rockwell, you could use 1950 and 300, or 2400, or 2100 and 500. Because the higher austenitizing temperature p potentially means more chromium in solution, we would expect the 2100 and 500 degree Fahrenheit combination to achieve the best corrosion resistance for that level of hardness. A unique aspect of MagnaCut is that all of its chromium carbide is dissolved around 2050 degrees, as shown in this chart. So if instead we were heat treating to 63 Rockwell, we could use 2050 and 300, 2150 and 400, or 2200 and 450, which would all have approximately equal corrosion resistance. So austenitizing above 2050 still leads to an increase in hardness for a fixed tempering temperature, but the corrosion resistance would be unaffected. This is an important aspect of tempering and corrosion when it comes to different regime of tempering, however. Stainless steels and other high alloy steels see a bump in hardness by tempering above about 750 degrees Fahrenheit, as shown in this chart for LMAX. You can see that the hardness sees a peak with tempering around 500 degrees Celsius, which is around 930 degrees Fahrenheit. This increase in hardness comes from precipitation of small chromium, molybdenum, tungsten, and vanadium carbides. Because chromium is coming out of solution as a tiny chromium carbide, this secondary hardening also leads to a decrease in corrosion resistance. So here I have Vanex that I heat treated in two different ways. The same austenitizing temperature, but I tempered one coupon at 400 degrees and the other at 1000 degrees, and then I did a 1% salt water spray test for 24 hours. The 400 degree tempered Vanex showed no corrosion, while the 1000 degree temper led to significant rusting. It is relatively common for knife makers and knife manufacturers to temper in that range of 950 to 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. They do that for several reasons. The main one is that the higher tempering temperature means the steel is less sensitive to overheating. This allows them to apply certain coatings to the steel that require temperatures to apply that are higher than a normal low tempering temperature of 400 degrees. It also means they don't have to be as careful with grinding because the steel can be heated up much higher before approaching the tempering temperature. Because if they heat it beyond the tempering temperature, the steel would soften. The high tempering temperature can be used with many stainless steels to achieve similar levels of hardness as the low tempering temperature. In other words, you can have two knives at 60 Rockwell or at 62 Rockwell with very different corrosion resistance, depending on whether they tempered in the low range or the high range. So I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters. The reason why I'm able to do so many experiments for Knife Steel Nerds and to give out all of this information and education on steel for free is because of the support of Patreon. So if you would like to support more research on knife steel, go to patreon.com slash knife steel nerds and become a supporter. We have certain perks there, like we have conversations that are exclusive to Patreon. I also put up articles and videos 
early. There's also exclusive articles, such as one about the current development status of Magnamax that is only on Patreon. So if you want to get those perks and to support Knifesteel Research, come to patreon.com slash nerds. So now switching back to what makes one steel more corrosion resistant than another. I've got two coupons here that I tested with 1% saltwater spray test, Vanex versus Elmex. Both were asanitized at 1975 Fahrenheit, which is the recommended temperature for both steels according to their data sheets, and I tempered both of them at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. The Vanex showed no corrosion, the Elmex has a bunch of rust spots on it. As I showed in a chart earlier, the Chromium in solution for Elmex would be around 11.5% at this austenitizing temperature and around 14.5% for Vanex. So Vanex would actually be a little bit harder than Elmex for this identical heat treatment. However, that was because the carbon plus nitrogen in solution was higher. So Elmex can be austenitized at higher temperature and achieve significantly higher hardness than Vanex, which reaches its maximum around 61 Rockwell C. This is because the Elmax has less chromium in solution, and therefore the martensite start and martensite finish temperature is higher. Vanex has more chromium in solution for a given carbon and nitrogen, and so that reduces its martensite start and martensite finish. If we calculate the martensite start temperature, we can see that with an austenitizing temperature of 2025 degrees, the MS of Vanex is about 150 degrees Celsius. That is where we saw the drop in hardness. Therefore, the martensite finish is sufficiently low that even with liquid nitrogen, not all of the austenite is transforming to martensite. So the hardness was lower at 2025 than 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. Elmax still has a predicted martensite start above 150C all the way to 2200 Fahrenheit, which is why its hardness increased all the way up to 2150, which is the highest temperature that I tried. So you can create an approximate relationship between corrosion resistance and maximum potential hardness for steels. And so the higher the corrosion rating, often the lower the potential hardness is. So this trend line is basically correlated with chromium in solution. So Vanax and LC200N have more than 14% chromium in solution, which gives them a very high corrosion rating, but also limits their potential hardness because of the low martensite start and high retained austenite. On the other end of the spectrum is ZDP-189, which achieves very high hardness and is advertised as a stainless steel, but in a study I did several years ago, I found that it is not actually a stainless steel. I measured only 8.6% chromium in solution with ZDP-189, which is very low. So with D2, I measured 7.7% with a relatively normal heat treatment for that steel, and D2 is famously called a semi-stainless steel, which is a similar category that ZDP-189 is in. It is not a stainless and that allows it to achieve very high hardness levels. There are other complicating parts to this trend line, however. Uh, it does not always perfectly correlate with chromium in solution. So molybdenum, for example, is an element known to improve pitting resistance and to strengthen the chromium oxide passive film. In tests I did with 1% salt water, there was an improvement in corrosion resistance for a given chromium in solution if the molybdenum was increased. CPM-154 with its high molybdenum content of 4% had acceptable corrosion resistance even with only 9.5% chromium in solution. One thing I should point out, the corrosion ratings in this chart are a rating of how much the samples rusted. It's not the same as the corrosion rating in the hardness trend plot, which is from my knife steel ratings. You may have also noticed S90V, S125V, M390, and S110V are all above the hardness corrosion resistance trend line. In other words, they have unexpectedly high maximum hardness for their corrosion rating. These steels all have very high carbide volume, more than 20%. Carbides are very hard particles, and when the volume of them is reaching such high levels, it can affect the bulk hardness that is measured. You can see that for the charts comparing non-stainless tool steels with different amounts of carbide, Venetis 4 Extra, 10V, and 15V. So when you go up in carbide from the Venetis 4 Extra, which is only around 8% carbide, you go up to 16% carbide in the 10V, you get a significant bump in hardness, around 2 Rockwell C. And then if you go up to the 23% or so carbide in 15V, you get another small increase in hardness. So those steels with lots of carbide can have a little bit higher hardness, even though they have a lot of chromium in solution. Uh, M390 and 14C28N both have similar chromium in solution depending on the austenitizing temperature, but M390 reaches a higher hardness because it has so much more carbide. Uh, 
So M390, a lot of carbide, more than 20%, while 14C28N is around 5 to 7% carbide, much less, and so its hardness does not reach the same level as M390. Another steel you'll see above the trend line is MagnaCut. It does not have particularly high carbide. It's about the same as Venatus 4 Extra. However, MagnaCut does not have any chromium carbide in it. So even though its chromium in solution is similar to a lot of other steels, it is missing those chromium carbides. Around every chromium carbide, there is a chromium depleted region right around that carbide. And so the carbide acts as an easy site for corrosion to begin and that leads to steels that are less corrosion resistant. So MagnaCut has better corrosion resistance for its level of chromium in solution. So maybe one of the things that has confused people is they mix the low potential hardness of steels like Vanex and LC200N with heat treating of other steels and assume that lower hardness means better corrosion resistance. However, as I have discussed, hardness and corrosion resistance don't really correlate for an individual steel. If anything, higher hardness sometimes correlates with higher corrosion resistance. If you use higher austenitizing temperatures in combination with a fast quench and cryo and temper at a low temperature, you get maximum corrosion resistance. This is also a recipe for high hardness as long as the austenitizing temperature isn't too high. However, tempering can be increased without detriment to corrosion resistance to heat treat to lower hardness levels as long as you don't temper above 750 degrees Fahrenheit. So therefore, hardness and corrosion resistance do not correlate for an individual steel. To summarize, austenitizing temperature, quench rate, and tempering can all affect corrosion resistance. Austenitizing higher leads to both higher hardness and better corrosion resistance. Beyond a certain temperature, cryo is necessary to get higher hardness. And even then, there is a temperature beyond which hardness decreases. Quenching too slowly, as happens often in industry, can lead to a reduction in corrosion resistance. Tempering in the high temperature range of 750 degrees Fahrenheit or more, also relatively common, significantly reduces corrosion resistance. Combinations of heat treating variables can be used to achieve a range of hardness values while maintaining high corrosion resistance. In other words, hardness does not correlate with corrosion resistance for a given steel. However, when comparing different steels to each other, there is a trend where more corrosion-resistant steels typically have a lower maximum hardness. Molybdenum alloying, avoiding chromium carbide such as in MagnaCut, and having a high volume of carbide all lead to higher potential hardness for a given level of corrosion resistance when comparing different steels to each other. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time.